You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. All right, cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Tony. Cheers. Oh, you don't have it. You didn't get your sake. Or are you not drinking right now? I got my Red Bull. Do you want a, this yeah, sake? sake? If you want, have a sake with okay. us, Tony. Have a sake with us, dude. Come get it on camera. You won't. Come get it, Tony. Come. <laughs> Tony, Tony, come with your sake. <laughs> we gotta have Tony. Come, mijo, drink your Here, sake. Crack it and cheers <laughs> it with us, dude. We're we're back. We're back after two weeks of Whoa. being lazy as fuck. I Dang. just I don't know. Cheers. 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 Dogs. Cheers. Oh, Matias is here for one. Oh, Cheers. Dang, Cheers, dude. Cheers. Hey. Cheers. We're having, we just hang out in here, dude. It's a chill vibe. Oh. That's really good. Mm, it it tastes good. like sake. What is, <laughs> okay. It, all right. Get out of here. Rice wine. Get out of here, you rascals. What is, what does sake <laughs> taste like if you're going to describe it to somebody <laughs> that you've never, God damn it. Yeah, dude. If you're going to describe it to somebody who's never had it before, because I, it tastes like nothing to me, but it, like, I can't. It almost tastes like, like coconut water, like old coconut water to me. That's true. Yeah, it does kind of taste like coconut water. It kind of looks like if you look at it, you can't see it on camera, but it's like, you ever just jizz and then, uh, <laughs> it's like super white, and then you just let it sit for a while. No, <laughs> where do you let it sit in your hand? No, nah, I mean like if you're just like, all right, it's a, ah, damn, I shouldn't have brought this up. <laughs> what, what are you? What are you doing with your jizz? Dude? You ever just like bust a nut and then you're just like, Ugh, and you just like close your eyes for a little bit, fall asleep with it <laughs> with it in your hand, <laughs> and then you wake up and you're like, it's on you, and you're like, oh, it's like clear now. No, that's never happened to me, brother. Right. I'm sorry. I didn't want to start that way. It's all right. Damn it. I I think I have nutted on a towel though, and you leave it there, and it gets super crusty over time. Yeah, crusty and yellow. If they could find out like why. Like what it comes just dries so fast, it gets so s sticky so fast. We might not even need glue anymore. I don't we think it, I don't think it gets sticky so fast. I think it just is. It just it? turns into concrete immediately, dude. If you don't get that sucker, I don't know if that's true. You don't think so? I don't think. I think your jizz is different than mine. It's <laughs> <laughs> you, you like stronger. Like, I have more bonding in my more bonding agents. Yeah, you could probably like my jizz. build a gingerbread house or something. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude, a gingerbread house. Gingerbread, gingerbread house, dude. I'm so hot right now. This AC needs to kick on. It's just, it's that whiskey that we just had. Are you hot? I feel good. It just turned it up on me, dude. The whiskey. Here, you want some water? I'm right. Sweet. I just want to drink. An Anthony Papali, is it Papali? Papali. 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 Is it Italian or? <laughs> yeah, it's 100. <laughs> percent No, it's not. I just tell people that. People think Papali. I'm Italian. Papali. It's a Tony Papali. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you're Italian. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I've been telling people I'm Italian. Some people believe it. Really? <clears throat> yeah, I tell them I'm half. I tell them my dad's Italian. Tell them you're native Italian. I'm native something. Italian. <laughs> 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 I mean, if you think about it, Italy is just right above North Africa. Those guys are brown. You know, I didn't pay attention enough in geography, dude. I don't know. I don't know where shit is on a map. It's Without fine. looking at it. If I look at the map, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's that. Yeah. 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 That's all right. So how long have you been in Austin, dude? I came here in October. In October of this yeah. of this year, of the last year, this or year hasn't year. happened yeah, yet. Yeah. Last year. This this last October. <laughs> I'm a time I traveler. I came yeah. here this October. I checked it out. <laughs> Looks good. So I, I came here to tell you that this Halloween <laughs> is going to be fire. It's going to be sick. <laughs> Are you liking it, dude? I I love it out here. It's my favorite place I've ever lived, and I've yeah. lived a lot of places. Really? Mm -hmm. Which where have you lived? So I was born in uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. Then I moved to Hawaii for a year when I was uh, in the military. Mm -hmm. From Hawaii, I went to Bahrain overseas. Then uh, Baltimore, New York, Pensacola, Florida, Orlando. Spent some time in Virginia. And you like this place the best, huh? This place has been the most fun, yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Just the stage know. time? The comedy is great. Mm -hmm. My friends are out here. Killer ass food. Cause you moved here recent, most recently from Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. I was okay. in like the Orlando. So area. you knew all the Florida guys, Cam and all those guys. Yeah, yeah, those are the Florida boys, Florida gang. Dude, Florida takeover. Gang, gang. You guys are taking over. over. <clears throat> and I like it's it. Awesome. More oh, guys yeah. are coming. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are killing it. Uh, I only spent a little bit. I've only spent a little bit of time in Florida when I was like on tour. You know. Yeah, with your and band. And it's fucking awesome, dude. Where did you go? We one day we had two days off in Pensacola and it was in November, so nobody was out there, brother. I'm sitting out there on the tip of Florida, yeah. just with no no tourism, no tourism, nothing. There was yeah. it was slow season. We got a hotel for like a hundred bucks. Hell yeah. And we all packed into it and we were just at the beach every day and there was like white sand and clear, clear 
uh, blue water. It's crazy. I feel like that part of Florida is like a hidden gem because it's like it doesn't seem like it's you don't ever hear it being talked about. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's right next to Alabama, but it's like the clearest blue water and the whitest sand, and it's uh, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. it's been like four months out there. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been getting <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. Florida's <laughs> sick, dude. Yeah, everybody. Florida's dope. That's where I uh. I decided I was going to do comedy full time. Sorry, dude. This is so annoying. It just shows the, how raw and, and organic we are here. We actually have a soil operation going people are under think, the table, dude. It's uh, People are going to think I brought them because I'm Indian. People are going to think you're a stinky Indian guy, dude. I just brought all the flies. <laughs> That's fucked up. So you were in the military. You're, uh, you have an interesting story. I kind of forgot. So can you tell me again why you're not in the military anymore? Yeah, dude. Well, like, it, it has to do with a little bit with Pensacola. Cause, uh, no way. Yeah, because I got stationed out there. I was going to go to flight school. I was going to be a pilot for the Coast Guard. And they send you to Navy Flight School, which is in Pensacola. So I get there, and uh, while I'm waiting a class up, there's a lot of downtime. So in that downtime, I just started doing, like, open mics and comedy. And it was, like, right after COVID, so I started, like, feeling in love with it again. And I was like, damn. Because you, you were doing it before COVID, too. I was doing it before COVID, but like after when COVID happened, I was like, maybe I'll just stop. And I focused on my military career mm-hmm. for a bit. And that's why I got accepted to flight school, and I did all that. And then uh, there I started doing comedy again after COVID, and I was like, damn, I like this. I like this more than anything. Yeah. And so I, uh, the, to do flight school, you have to sign like an eight-year contract. And I was like, I don't know if I want to... To sell your soul. <laughs> yeah. You want to fly these planes, boy? <laughs> I was like, I, it sounds cool, but I don't know if I want to sign my life away for eight years for something I'm not 100% sure of. It's like, or what? <laughs> you can't just be like, hey, psych. Like, what are they going to do? Are you going to go to jail? You, would you go to jail or something if you were like, if you signed the contract and then bail out of it? No. Because there's like no a, bailing out of there's it. There's no bailing out of it. I signed a contract. Oh, man. And so, uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, you go to jail. <laughs> you go to jail? <laughs> if you don't do it. <laughs> so I was like... Uh, before I signed the contract, I just like went up. I had to go up to like this. Uh, he was a Coast Guard pilot in, in charge of. He was an 06, a captain. He's like a big deal, and he used to be like an Army, like Apache helicopter pilot. So he's like a badass dude. And I had to go up to him and be like, "Hey, I uh, kind of like just telling jokes at open mics. <laughs> I think I'm gonna quit flight school." <laughs> he's like, he was like, he was like, not many people get to the opportunity you're being afforded right now. And I was like. I just like telling jokes and yeah. I, I quit. You're like, but I do it for the love of the game, dude. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I thought they were just going to send me to like another land unit and I'd be like, all right, I'll just chill here until my contract's done. And then uh, <clears throat> they did it and they sent me to a boat. And this boat was just deporting Cubans like crazy. <laughs> what? So they sent me to this boat and I was just on this ship deporting Cubans for, for a month that I was there. And we pulled back in, and I was like, I don't want to do this for yeah. the next two years. This sucks. So, like, my mental health crashed, and I didn't feel good, and I started doing comedy out in, like, uh, Melbourne and Orlando. And uh, just one day I got caught up doing a show, and I uh, just uh, fucking lit it up, and career suicide kind of just happened, and I, I uh, turned myself You in. did what? I just smoked weed. You smoked weed. Yeah. At like a sh- at an open mic. Yeah, I was just like at a show with some comics. And I bought some, got some weed. weed at and a, at a they, mic. Uh, <laughs> was it an open mic? It was an open. <laughs> you smoked weed at an open mic. It wasn't even mic like and- a, it wasn't even like a killer ass show. It was just like an open mic. Did you have like a moment? You know, like if you, it, I don't know if you've ever like quit smoking like cigarettes or anything, or if you've ever like quit. You know, you know those pe- people that quit drinking or smoking and they're about to go and relapse or something. They have a moment where they're like, all right, like I'm gonna take this L. So I can hit this weed, or I'm gonna take this L so I can have this drink. It's like, did you have that moment a little bit when you were like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this weed, and I know that, uh, I know that I'm gonna, you know, ruin my my military career. Uh, in the moment, I was, I think I had a few drinks in me, and I was oh. like, this will be all right. Give me that fucking weed. And then uh, I smoked it, and then all the thoughts of like, because my whole military career, I was like a pretty good straight like A like a, student. I was like a stellar uh, coastie for a while. Private. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I did great. So when this I is you, this, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, as lame as it sounds, yeah, no, it's it's not, it's not lame. It's <clears throat> it's actually wild because I feel like you're just like so ch- you're just so chill. Yeah, and so I feel like I couldn't, I could, I can't imagine you just <laughs> <laughs> just like yes, and like your boots are always fucking shining and your bed's yeah, made. Yeah, I was and a good, shit. I was a good coasty, and then uh, I smoked, and I was like, 
I had the worst high of my life. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Why'd you do that? What went through your... Was it cool for a second? You were like, dude, I forgot how fun this is. And then you were like, <laughs> wait yeah. a minute. It was like a millisecond of cool. And then the rest of it was just like, oh, no, my life is over. I oh ruined my, my life. God. And uh, The worst paranoia attack from weed ever. For real. And I just felt bad and I felt guilty. And then uh, yeah. I went to work and I uh, confessed... <laughs> <laughs> you told on yourself I told on myself I was just like I went up to uh, The executive officer He's like the second in charge His office on the boat And I was like Hey I got something to say And uh, I basically confessed And he was like well, Damn That sucks Cause we gotta Kick you out <laughs> Basically And they actually What happened was They did like an investigation Into what happened And then uh, I actually got arrested By Coast Guard Investigative Services what? Because smoking weed is a felony. It's a violation of UCMJ military law. So these cops, the the, uh, the Coast Guard so, investigative guys, they follow military law. So they came, they interviewed me like it was true detective. They set up a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. For hitting a joint yeah, at a party? Was exactly. it a joint? Yeah, that's it. Oh my God, that is so funny. They set up a camera in front of me and they was very formal. And I, <laughs> I wish you would have been, uh, I wish you would have been hitting a gravity bong. <laughs> you know, and they were like, can you explain to us what this is? Yeah. Uh, that, your honor, is a gravity <laughs> bong, is what they call it. <laughs> Yeah. You're know, like, and it works because as you pull it up, and he's like, "I know how it works." You know? <laughs> no, yeah, so. they they uh, they interviewed me and took a video, and then uh, they didn't put me in handcuffs, but they took my fingerprints and took like a mug shot. They just really wanted to rub it in. Yeah, but they were cool. They were like, they were like, <laughs> it was crazy. They were like, "Nah, you're gonna be fine." <laughs> <laughs> they were probably like, "Dude, good idea." You know what I mean? All you have to do to get kicked out, if you're like, so if you if you get into the military because you sign up and you're like, I'm gonna do this, and you get in there and you're like, fuck, yeah. what do I do? You know, do I have to break my leg? Do I have to say I'm gay? Yeah. What do I have to do? You yeah. know what I mean? And then uh, the gay thing would have been a sweet one too. Back in the day, back in the day, that would back been in sweet. the day that would have been dope, dude. Hey, by the way, I'm into dudes, Who's so I I gotta go home. I, mi I miss my mom and yeah, I'm into yeah. dudes. Can I please go home? There's a comic. Uh, what's his name? He was the uh, Lenny Bruce. You know Lenny Bruce, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of him. He was in I'm the not well versed. I don't yeah, want to yeah, lie. He's and like say one of the well classic, versed. like I've heard uh, I've heard Rogan and stuff talking about OG him. guys to do stand up and like make it like a thing in America. I need to watch <clears> some <throat> classic Lenny Bruce. Yeah, yeah look up, up on look it. up Lenny Bruce. He uh I was re I read his book and he was in the Navy during World War II. And then uh sometime during the war, he was like, I'm fucking done with this shit. <laughs> and so he just Pretended to be gay and they kicked him out. No way. <laughs> yeah. So it does did work. People it actually did, did that. It did, but they uh, they arrested him too oh, <laughs> shit. for being gay for pretending to be gay. Oh, okay, because it was a crime. It was a crime. Then. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So he got out doing that. How long has it been since they changed that? Uh, well, I don't think you got arrested for a while, but that law, that whole like you can't be gay in the military, changed under Obama. Under Obama. Yeah. Which is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy to be gay in the military and not tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. Do you think a bunch of dudes came out after that? Like oh, on, yeah. on base? You oh, think there for was sure. a was there a pride party on base? I That'd be pretty that. crazy. <laughs> That'd be pretty crazy, dude. They're like just like dancing floats. on the tank. Yeah, like, just, <laughs> their camos are like cut into yeah, assless yeah. chaps and they're just fucking I'm sure it happened. I know a lot of gay coasties who were like, Yeah, I was in and I was I had to be closeted for for years. Yeah. It's crazy. What's the whole gay dudes in the Navy thing? Because that's a whole thing. Yeah, they're gay. What's up? All uh, the Navy, yeah. all the Navy guys. Everybody are gay? in the Navy is gay. All of them. Every single one. Imagine being the one straight dude. <clears throat> There's not one. That's <laughs> a... <laughs> but like, what if I was like, you know, I'm gonna join the Navy. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, as soon as you go to a boot camp, you go gay. Really? Yeah. There's, so there's some weird. It's like the opposite of conversion therapy that happens there. Yeah. Where it, like you get. It is conversion therapy. Yeah. It's just the <laughs> other way. And if you're gay already, you just go more gay. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Nah, the Navy's cool. The Navy's all right, but the that's like the thing. Yeah. We we call them gay. I think it's because. But it's why a, is that? Where did that come from? <clears throat> Was well, it all from YMCA? From the <laughs> <laughs> young man. I don't know. You know, like uh, like aircraft carriers, they have like five thousand people on them. Like, they're huge. They're like, little cities. So there's, like, gangs. What? Yeah. No. You've never heard that? No. There's, like, gang. I, that's what I've heard. There's, like, gangs on aircraft carriers. Tony, I hate to put you to work. Look up gangs on aircraft carriers, because I don't believe you. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. 
because there's so many people. It's like, like a little city. Yeah, there's five thousand people on one ship in the middle of the ocean. In the middle of the ocean. That's fucking crazy. So there's like areas where there. I heard like, oh, you're not supposed to go here because that's that's like their territory. Mm -hmm. And then they would like pimp out. <laughs> they would like pimp out women on the boat. They'd be like, yeah, these junior enlisted women, they're fucking. They're ready to they're fuck. Sluts. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's crazy. But the the whole navy gay thing, I think it's because they a bunch of dudes go on a boat and they go out in the ocean together and ain't no yeah. way, ain't no way they ain't fucking. I wonder what started first, the rumor or like it actually being true. Like maybe there was one gay dude in the navy and then they were like, you know what all those guys at sea are doing. Yeah. You know, and then you get there and you're like, well, they already think we're doing it. Yeah. Well, know. their outfits are kind. Of, I mean, the sailor outfit, like their uniform is gay as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, new tab, uh, Navy uniform? Look up Navy dress uniform. Navy Navy, uni Navy dress uniform. Is it really gay? It's literally like what you would see like a male stripper wear. No. Yeah. But is this, is that just because uh, we're programmed to think that male strippers dress yeah, like right in there, the Navy? The picture of like the five guys right there on the right. The top row right there. Two Thanks. over? Yep, that was good. That's the uniform. And then they rip <laughs> it off and they're like. Right? Yeah. They and the and the pants are tear away, but you can't tell. <laughs> yeah. That's the uniform. Yeah. I don't know though. What what I just I'm curious about that. I'm curious about where the gay navy thing came from. Because I feel like it's just one of those things where we're just like, yep, navy's gay. <clears throat> Have you ever been but on a boat for multiple days with other with only dudes? With, no, I haven't. Gay shit happens. You start licking your chops at him, dude. <laughs> What's happening to me? You start turn. You're turning. <laughs> He's turning. Yeah, it's like you got. I saw. Bit. I saw him staring at <sighs> Andrew's ass. He's turning. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> convulsing. <laughs> you know, in like cartoons, when like uh, when they're like stranded or something, and they like Rugrats going through the desert. That one episode. Yeah, yeah. You know, and <laughs> yeah. like they start. Mirage. Tommy. Tommy starts looking at Chucky, and his head turns into a chicken. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're just looking at your homie's head, and it turns into like an ass with fishnets on it. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. And I, you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> that's probably how like mermaids. Wait a minute, no. I think that's how mermaids started because guys were just on this boat. Like I'm tired of fucking man ass. I, I'm so tired of this. I'll fuck a fish if I have to. <laughs> and they just started like seeing like. You think there's fish fuckers out there? I think so. <laughs> You never hear about that, dude. You always hear about, like, you know, you, typically livestock is what people fuck, right? When you hear what? about people oh, yeah, fucking yeah, like animals. Sheep, sheep. What? Wait uh, a minute. We're I, was fucking... thinking, I was thinking livestock. I was like, what is livestock? I was like, yeah, right, tip, I was thinking tip, chickens. I was like, what? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> before a fish, you've heard about a chicken fucker. Before, oh, that's true. Before yeah. a fish, nobody's ever been called a fish fucker. That's true, yeah. You hear but... Jeremy fucks, his, fucks the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Catch and release, dude. <laughs> Well, it's crazy is uh, I was looking it up because I was writing a joke about mermaids, and I guess mermaids exist, like, the, the lore of mermaids are in every every culture has a lore of mermaids. So it makes you wonder. What? It makes you wonder, like, if mermaids are real or dudes are just so universally horny, they're, like, out, out at sea, and they're like, all right, I'll fuck a fish. If that fish had titties, I'd fuck. Yeah. I feel like they kind of got us early, though. At least people like our age, they got us early with the sexualization of mermaids. Yeah, because they because Ariel was kind of hot. Kind of hot, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? As a young, you know, you're like that was maybe the first hot animated chick we ever saw. We were like, and she was half fish. Yeah, and we were like, this is confusing. And then she gets her legs, and you're like, yes, yes, <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> yes, no more head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tired of just getting head. Yeah. <laughs> Tired of those scales rubbing on my thighs, <laughs> dude. She, rubbing on my calves while she's giving me head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, <sighs> from mermaids to manatees, the myth and the reality. This is mm. why I love Tony. He's just like Tony's. Just like I'm curious, so I'm gonna cruise and we're gonna watch. I've heard of this, so I heard that like uh, Christopher Columbus said he saw mermaids, but they were like, nah, it's just one of those. It's just a manatee. But how funny would it be if it was just a fat mermaid? <laughs> how bad would you tell feel? Me, dude, tell me that's the bit. <laughs> no, it's not. Dude, right. write that down. That's <laughs> funny. That is good. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> it's just like some fat mermaid, and she's like, I'm not a manatee. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm a water-inhabiting human being. <laughs> it's going to bomb, but it's fine. No, it's fine, dude. Try it. Manatee. That's where I'm at, dude. I'm... I'm I'm scared to try shit that'll bomb. That's prob so. This is where I'm at, and I, I need here. your guidance. Let's dude. go. How long you been doing comedy? I've been doing it too long. I've been doing. I mean, I started about uh, almost nine years ago now. 
nine years. But I've taken breaks. Like COVID was a big break, and then deployments have been a big big break. But nine years. So I just I think I just took my like biggest break since I started doing it, which was like two or three weeks, only going up like once, and that's just so bad. Yeah, so naughty. That's yeah. such a naughty no-no, and I'm bringing it up now <clears throat> to keep myself accountable. Sure. Because I want to get back out there, but the thing is, so I'm at this weird point where I have, like, five to six minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I've been pretty honest about my little, it's just, That's you know, fine, I'm man. going from music to comedy. So I've been pretty, I've, the people on here have f- heard the journey of me trying this. And yeah, hell yeah. Yonder <clears throat> told me on the podcast to just do it, and then after that, I fucking did it. So I'm like, yeah. I'm trying here. But I got to the point where I did some, I've done some shows. And I've and I've gotten paid to do comedy, which is cool. I never thought That's sick. I never thought I'd ever do that. Get that, and I did good. Yeah. I did good. I did okay. That's great. I survived, and people were the people were like, "That was that was good, dude." You know, like people that wouldn't lie to me. Yeah, you have potential. But I'm at this like point where I'm in this weird safety zone, yeah, where like I feel place. like I feel like I have like these five things that'll that'll work that I can talk about for yeah, six yeah. seven minutes, and then like the. The new shit I'm writing, I'm looking at my notes and stuff and thinking about yeah. when I'm going to go out. And I'm like, I just don't think I have anything that I want to try, try. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, so I'm still bashful. I'm bashful about trying stuff. So you don't want to try it? Or you want to try <sighs> it, wanna, but you just... I want to try it, but I for, I <clears throat> think I've been working on this stuff. And then I've, like, forgotten what it feels like to, to try a new thing. So yeah. that, it's like... Yeah, it sucks. Well, but that's also kind of the the... That's the rush that keeps us is supposed to keep us kind of going back. Yeah, that's yeah. the little that's the little hit of like, oh, I'm gonna say this thing and see yeah. if it does it work. But I'm just I, I'm at a, I'm at like a a point where I'm like I don't want to go out unless I have something new that I'm stoked on. Yeah, or I'm booked on a thing where I'm gonna do my my five right. right. And I think that's a dangerous place to be this early in doing stuff because I, I need to figure out a way to like. Stay motivated and be confident enough to go try, but that's what, try the new shit. Yeah, you're and at that's that, what makes you good. You're at that point where you're like, I can either just keep doing my five minutes and maybe very, very slowly Tweet. build it a little bit. <clears throat> and that's where a lot of open micers are just they just fucking they die there. They die. Because they're like, yeah. Oh, I, I have a great five minutes. And that's the that's the you feel so good there. But that and it's like you're not developing. It's though. like good and bad though. <clears throat> Because like I, you, you, it's good if you're not self-aware and have you know. It feels good. If have you're not goals or whatever. Yeah. It feels good, and then you go, ah, but I'm fucking. Sla- I'm not going out <clears throat> yeah. every night like I should be going out. You know what I mean? And like, how long have you been doing it now? Uh, se- uh December was a year. Damn. So, so you're so you're so new. Who who cares? <clears throat> you should be throwing shit. You should be throwing everything against the wall. Yeah. You know the five six minutes you have that you you like. Cool. That's great. But you got to learn how to like replicate that. Otherwise, you're gonna be so like I'm. I'm at that right now where I'm like, I moved to Austin. I was like, okay, when I move to Austin, I'm just gonna do my my known material, mm-hmm. just like until people get to know me and I can I, I get established in the scene. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, I've been doing known material for so long that I'm so scared to do new shit, mm-hmm. and that sucks. That's not a good place to be because uh, you only develop as a comic when you're constantly throwing shit against the wall. Right. Yeah. So, like, I fully acknowledge that <clears throat> what I'm doing is bad behavior, which is good. And I, but, but I, and I, but I'm like, okay, and I'm just gonna go back to where I started doing stand up, which was at the Lucky Duck, and I'm gonna yeah. go tomorrow, and just get, basically start over. That's how I feel. I feel sure. like I'm starting. I feel like I'm going up for the first time again. Yeah, and, and it's because like, it's so not like riding a bike. Right. You know what I mean? And maybe it's and maybe set. that's a good learning experience for me too. If I'm it, being honest, that you, like yeah. that you know what I mean? That like, oh, you can't just chill for. Two weeks, three sure. weeks, whatever, and go up once, like it, you know what I mean. You, you gotta, gotta like, you have to be out there every night because with music, it's so kind of you're just chilling until sure. you get a show booked. Okay, we gotta practice, right? T- you know, once or twice a week until the show, and then and you can tell if you sound good or not, right? In practice, you're like, yeah, we sound great. Yeah, but there's a little delusion there. Okay, you know, because a band practice is like an open mic with nobody there, right? You're like, yeah, that joke hits. But when you perform, you know I mean? but like, when you perform, that how joke's do you fucking sick, dude? In a band, I don't know how it works. In a band, how do you judge if you did good or not? You know, you don't. Right. You just ever, well, you, you know, show. You, if you're a guitar, Tony's a guitarist. So if you're a guitarist, you break a string. That's then yeah, you know, sure. right? 
But <clears throat> when you break a string, though, a lot of times guys will just keep playing on the lower frets, or they'll like they'll they'll do some crazy shit where they change the string mid set, or they'll grab their backup guitar and it's no big deal. Right. But ba but basically, most people just tell you good set. Sure. Right. Like it's hard to know if you did. It's like a D. You have to be super self critical. Right. With music to be like I. And a lot of times people are like way overly self. It's either like you're totally delusional and you think you're a fucking rock star, perfect, or you're like super duper self critical and you're like, I fucked up the third note of okay. the second bridge and everyone's gonna know. Right. You know, and it's like <clears throat> most people don't really notice, you know? Sure. I would say for me, like I've dropped the mic before a lot, stepped yeah. on the cable and okay. it flies out of my hand or something, you know? Yeah. Or like I've forgotten a lyric, but it's like we're not big enough where people know. Sure, you know what I mean. And so it's like or flubbed a lyric, but yeah. Yeah, like, that seems tougher than comedy because at least in comedy you get instant feedback. You're like, all right, yeah. that didn't work at all, which is uh, I've learned the honestly the biggest thing that has helped me. Like I, I feel like personally, it's it's made me go to the next level with my comedy, is being so comfortable with the bomb. Yeah. You know? Just being like, all right, it bombed. It wasn't great. I even post it. I post on my story all the time. Like, ah, this fucking bomb, bomb yeah. show, bomb set, or whatever. Like, being so comfortable with the bomb has been the biggest thing to elevate me because I'm like, if I bomb, it's just <coughs> a, it's a, it's data, you know? Like, mm -hmm. all right, this, this shit needs work or I need to do new shit or whatever. Mm. Like, being comfortable with the bomb, being okay bombing, going up, trying new shit and bombing with it, that's, that's like the, in my in my personal experience, it's been the best thing uh, that's elevated me with stand up. And I still I still suck ass. I still bomb all the yeah. time. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> but you don't get like a creative block though, where you're like, I don't want to go out, or like, uh, or like, I don't, I don't know. Like I get I get creative block a lot with a lot of things with like everything I do with music and fucking photography stuff. Like and, if you're booked on something, you don't want to go out. No, 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 no. Like going out to bikes. Yeah, like I mean, basically keep. I'm trying to keep the fire of to to go out to the mics, and it has nothing to do with how much I like doing it. Yeah, but it's just kind of like, I don't know. I feel like I'm in a block right now because I don't I don't like. I'm tired of doing the the same jokes I've been doing. That's and, what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's basically where that's what I'm trying to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to get <clears throat> ways that I can get past that. You just gotta. It's, you it's, just have to go out and it, and look at a thought and be like, "I'm gonna talk about this." There's no special trick. It literally is like, I just have to fucking not do the the shit I always do, and I just have to do this new shit that I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. Yeah, and it's tough because it's just like the first time you did stand up. Yes, but, yeah, it's like you're constantly. Yeah, you, know, you got to do it. That's part of the magic. And then the more you do it, it honestly gets easier. Like when I was in Florida. Every Sunday and Wednesday were like my favorite mics in Florida. Mm -hmm. I would do those, and I was excited every week because I was like, "I have new shit. Let's see if it sticks." And you got to get to that point where it's like, "Like, all right, I'm gonna do completely new shit. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does work, holy shit! I just added a minute or two minutes to my set, you right? Know? <clears throat> and you can work on that, like you worked on the other jokes, and tag it up. Hundred yeah. percent, yeah." Once you've got the idea, the nugget that works. There's no, like... There's, oh, I'm just trying to figure it out. Personally, I feel like there's no, like, special trick or anything. Well, everyone has their own unique way sure. of, like, going about it. And that's why it's like... And I have so much stuff that I throw on my phone or, or write down on. I carry a little notebook around. I'm trying to, like, write and do the whole thing. But yeah. it's just... Sometimes I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I'm not... Like, I, I know... It's weird. It's like after the... After I have something down, okay. the, the music... This is what I've learned in the last, like, two months. Because I didn't do stand-up for, like, two weeks because I had family and shit in town, excuses that don't matter. Yeah. And then I went and did a, a show at Vulcan, Risky, at a, at a year. Okay. Risky at one year in stand-up. Sure. Haven't been what to a mic in two it? weeks. It was uh, Midnight Mass. Okay. And it was That's actually a fun show. It was actually pretty. It was actually, f like, the whole bottom was, f was Yeah, they full. get a crowd sometimes. It it's was awesome. awesome. It's, it's it was cool. good. Shout out to Mason Smith. In Munford Davis. Mason Smith, Munford Asian. Davis. Munford Asian, dude. <laughs> I, don't know. I fucking this, love both of those guys so much. Um, dude, the sake. I wish we had 20 of these. Dude. I, know, I, I, can't, would, I, I can't believe would, how fast I, I went through this. I was like, I God would damn. I crush so many Kimbo. Shout out to Kimbo. <laughs> Junmai. 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 Kimbo Sake. Kiku Sui. Kimbo Sake. But, uh, <clears throat> 
fuck, I forgot I was hiding. Um, yeah, uh, Midnight Mass. You oh, yeah, that. but I did Midnight Mass, and it was like, it's dangerous, dude, because I think for me, my, uh, my music brain yeah. kicks in and goes, oh, I know this song. Okay. I know how this song goes. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I do the thing, and I know the parts now for those, and that's that's a cool thing that I know that I can do that. Right. But then I get I get comfortable in that zone. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I did fine. I did it better than fine. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, great. And then, uh, you're talking. You're <laughs> and talking I was. And I had a rough going up, dude. Yeah. I'm not gonna throw shade at at who it was. If he hears this, it'd be funny. But but it, but he was. <laughs> There was like two uh, black people in the crowd, and the comic before me was doing crowd work, yeah. and he was talking to uh, the crowd in front of me, or the, he was t he was talking to the crowd right before he called me up, and he was like, he started talking to the two black people, and like he did a joke that missed, <laughs> yeah. and he was like, oh, I knew I shouldn't have talked to the blacks or something like that. <laughs> Just went super downhill racially, you know. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm not gonna shout it out. He thinks this is funny. He knows what, he would think this is funny. But then, uh, but then he goes, "All right, give it up for my my buddy, my pal Taylor Gorman, coming to the stage." I had to like come on right <laughs> after that, dude. That's so, so, but that fun. was a good experience, though. As yeah. a as a you know as yeah. a, a a young comic to like come up on a <clears throat> on a rough, ooh, dude. You know, a, cr a kind of like a. He ended on a good note. Still, he sure. figured he, yeah, he yeah, yeah, got yeah. some laughs before he ended. It wasn't right after, right. but he uh, he he's a professional. But he uh, <laughs> he brought me up and like that was probably the worst situation I've been brought up in, right? Like as far as what happened right before my set. So there's all these learning experiences, but the show went good, and so now I'm like, I'm like I'm in that weird. Con I'm like, oh, I can I can get away with that. Yeah, you yeah. know, like my 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 ape brain is like you can. Get away with that. My lazy brain. You How know? much time did you do? Six? I you did know, like six or seven minutes. Yeah. So think about like it. A, yeah. Like if you had fun like six or seven minutes, imagine how much fun you'd have doing like fifteen Dude, or twenty, know. you know? Yeah, you're right. And, and but, I do but, want I do want it. But there's only one way to get there. Is to try and do the scary shit. You gotta do bomb. You gotta bomb. You gotta do the scary shit. You gotta bomb, dude. You're gonna you're gonna bomb. I bombed. I bombed I bombed in the in the first yeah, for sure. A lot. But not enough not I I'm not I'm still I feel like I was more comfortable with it when I didn't have shit. Yeah. When I was like nothing. I don't know if any of this stuff works, but now yeah, I have yeah. the things that work, and I'm like, it's like a warm blanket. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. You got to do it. I mean, maybe like, this conversation can help another young, another for sure, first dude. starting comic. Go like, out there and fucking bomb you, fucking piece pussy, of shit. You pussy, you pussy, pussy, pussy go Taylor. bomb, dude. I know, but for real, you should go. Just do it. Honestly, that's like I'm. I'm saying that as a guy who I'm afraid. Sometimes they do new shit all the time, but uh, can you tell me about a recent bomb uh, uh, that you're wanting to talk? That is funny, at least. Or no? Dude, uh, <laughs> I did. Uh, it was probably like a few weeks ago. It was probably one of my worst recent bombs. It was like a Jolly David Jolly and Friends show at mm -hmm. Sunset Strip, and this was the second one I've done. The first one I did, I bombed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, here we go, redemption time. So we're at Sunset Strip. I think it's like a Friday night at like nine o'clock. It's pretty packed for a sunset for like a not a prime time show. It was mm -hmm. like I think it was like nine or ten o'clock. You said it was Sunday? No, it was like a sat Friday or Saturday. Okay. So it was good. It was supposed to it was a good day. And Shout out a, David Jolly. David Jolly, man. He's the, the man. man. The unk. Unk. Unk Jolly, dude. Unk Jolly, bro. We love you. America's uncle. He's so cool. He's the best. But I uh and his crowd is great too. But I went up there and I I always bomb at sunset. I feel like sunset is the is the place I've had the worst. <coughs> I've only ever gotten crickets there from hitting. I hit the that the mic super late sometimes, at like like one a.m. Yeah, there's like yeah. three people in there. Of That's course. my fault for not. I, getting there I'd rather earlier, that but. than what happened. I did the. There's probably like forty or fifty people there, and I remember I went up and the first minute, two minutes didn't get any laughs, and I was like, God damn, I'm really bombing up here, aren't I? <laughs> And David, David was in the crowd watching, so I was like, "Ah, Jolly's watching me bomb on his show. This sucks." <sighs> he doesn't care. I don't think he. He cares doesn't care because he came back in the green room. and He was like, "Dude, I heard you. He heard you were bombing." <laughs> <laughs> he was laughing, dude, because he's seen me kill. So I'm like, yeah. "All right, it, it's all right if he sees me bomb." But it was just like I would say stuff. I would say stuff that I know works, and it was bombing. And I was like, "God damn." Yeah, what is that? Yeah, that's that is an and that's gonna happen, dude. That's an interesting thing to get used to. I feel like for me coming from music, yeah, 
because music crowds, of course, they're going to be, you know, Atlanta is going to be different than whatever, sure. you know, than uh, Seattle. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Places are different. People are different. Right. But comedy crowds, it's like every night in every room in every city is different. It's different. A little, at least a little bit different. They're, they have their own and every night of the week, and then just every if if it's you know this Monday is going to be different from that Monday. Yeah, that's a weird thing to get used to because just, yeah, like the South by crowds were weird. I did a couple mics during South by yeah, and it was like, and I saw I went and watched a bunch of people do stand up, a bunch of friends do stand up. Ridley sure. did a bunch of sets, you know, yeah, 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 and I was hanging out with him, and the South by crowds were weird. Did you notice that? I didn't. I don't, I don't even know. I think I did one or two shows during South by. And I think one was that Jolly Show. Oh, really? Shit, yeah. So they were weird. It well, was, I, it was yeah. like out of town tour. You're starting trying to talk about your penis. <clears throat> but I, you know what I mean? And, the, and yeah. they're like, you know, you're like, come on, guys. I'm talking about my dick here. Give me a chuckle. And the only thing, like, though. And they're like, no, I'm from Calif- I'm from Silicon Valley. I would <laughs> agree. Not- except on that show, the people after me killed. Yeah. Like my friend, like Jimmy Moynihan, Jake Rika, a new guy from Florida. They crushed. And I was like. I suck. I suck ass. Yeah. So it's a weird mental battle. Like every, is, every time you go on stage and get off, you're either like, we can do this. <laughs> yeah. Or you're or you're like, or you're like, why are we doing this? Yeah. yeah. I've been bombing a lot out here, which is good. I needed that. I needed like the reset. You need Florida, to toughen up. In Florida, I was killing it and I think I got so complacent and stuff. And now I come out here and I'm like, I've had some good sets, like some really great sets out here, but I've had a lot of good bombs where I'm like, fuck, dude, I gotta. I gotta yeah. step my game up. Isn't bombing though? It's kind of like for me when it's happened to me, it's kind of funny. Like to me, sure. I'm like, you fucking suck. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. this, this idea doesn't work. It's like you know, it's fun to bomb when you're trying something crazy that you wrote. I'm like, I don't know. Let me talk about. Uh, I I write. I'm trying to get away from. It. I write a lot of like sexual bits, mm-hmm. and when I write like a very like perverted or like sexual bit in a bombs, I'm like, this is stupid. I was up here talking about dogs jizzing for <laughs> two minutes in a bomb. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> but then it's almost like if you commit at a certain point, it'll flip over. Like, damn, this guy really cares about dogs <laughs> jizzing, yeah. dude. <laughs> and sometimes there, that bit does well. <laughs> There's some places that bit does We're well. We're keeping the dog jizzing bit. <laughs> you understand? I still do it because it fucking every once in a while it hits. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a cool crap. I have a bit about shedding your dick skin, so that's pr- that's even dumber, I think. What? Yeah. Like a snake? Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like you just have dick skin laying around your apartment? Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. If you're yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Tell your girlfriend to flush your <laughs> tell your boyfriend to flush his dick's dick skin, dude. Just leave it on the sink. <laughs> hey, these are new tags, actually. I'm gonna write this down. Like you, <laughs> your friend, your friend shaves over the sink. He doesn't wash the hair, but you leave your dick skin up there. Dude, my toothbrush is. Right yeah, I there. had dudes that would have their girlfriends come and stay when I had roommates, like when I was really young, and they would hair? like. No, they would just leave their tan, their their bloody tan oh, on what? in the on the, in the top, trash? on the top of the trash, ah. like presenting it on the top of like clean on a bed of. Of tissue, yeah, and you're like either cover it up or flush it, dude. Just cover or, it up or flush it because I'm gonna yeah. grab it and put it in a cover cocktail glass. Cover up your glass. dick skin or flush it, Randy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Randy shedding again. What is that? Is... I'm now curious. What is, what is the bit? What no, I know. No, I don't want it. Oh, I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like if you. Sh- it, it's basically a, a. It's a clever period male period joke. It's a clever male period joke. It's like I think it'd be cool if dudes shed Once their a sh- month. Shed their dick skin every Does once in a while. Does it hurt in the joke? And it, yeah, it'd be like it'd be like uncomfortable, and you'd be like, like and emotional. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your girlfriend would try to have sex, and you'd be like, "Babe, stop! I'm shedding right stop, now. I'm sh- stop! You know I don't like to. I'm shedding, yeah. dude. Yeah. And your boys would know too, and they'd be like, "You shedding? You shedding, yeah, bro?" They'd be like, "Dude, I think, I think <laughs> we've been hanging out a lot recently, and uh, I think you sync I'm up. shedding too, dude. <laughs> you guys sync up. Yeah. Uh, dude, ah, fuck! I'm shedding now, yeah. dude. You piece of shit. That's all right." I need yeah. to stop using that joke anyway, so this will be a good way to, for me or to mentally just, just kill re- it. revamp it. Yeah, revamp. Re-ramp. Well, we're gonna add now. We're gonna add things to it. That's good. It's good riffs. Good riffs, dude. Riff city. Riff, riff city. How long have we been going, Tony? Forty minutes. Forty minutes, dude. Dang. That's perfect. That I wanted fun. to talk to you. So you're saying you write a lot of sexual jokes? Yeah. This is perfect because I wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, we no. went. I wanted to talk to you about some sexual oh, no. stuff, dude. No. Uh, 
I had a buddy in town and I was taking him around to go do com see comedy shows. Yeah. And it was over it was around St. Patrick's Day, I think he was here, okay. if I remember correctly. And I think you were on the pervert show. Oh yeah. Dude. So can we talk can we do can Dude. we do, is, would Creek or anybody get mad if we talk about the, the pervert so. show and uh, every the shit that went down at the pervert? Yeah. The show's fun. It's Dude. a great show. I mean they Dude, put it on. So the crazy shit that happened at the show. Yeah. With the with the vibrator. Yeah. And the shocking. Help the, me explain it. I like. I basically am kind of like traumatized from it. So I didn't even. So know. what is the premise of the show? What I, did they tell you? <laughs> so I was booked on the show. I had never seen it before, and everybody was like, "Holy shit, you're doing the pervert show? What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What do you mean? You just do a set. You do a dirty set or whatever. You tell dirty jokes, and that's it. That's all I thought." And so I go up. Uh, I think second on the lineup. It's structured. There's like different events that happen. Yeah, throughout. there's a host, there's two comics, then there's an event, and then there's two comics. And then you vote for the, out of the four, who's the pervert comic. The most perverted? Yeah. So it's a competition. But uh, halftime of the show, uh, for this specific show, it was that chick who comes out on stage and she hooks up her, She she's fully nude. She takes off her... Uh, her pants and her underwear and she straps like an electric dildo into her pussy and like her pussy is like spread open by clamps i think that yeah they happening. they well no 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 they i believe that the clamps were also electric Ele okay then they were electric so, clamps so yeah, it was an sense. electric it was they had electrified the dildo yeah. and electric clamps on the lips right and they had that chick go against Candace Medina a very funny comic Candace Medina give her a follow uh, Shout out, Candace. They did a roast battle, basically, and whoever's joke did the worst. If the the chick with the shocking vagina did the worst, she would get shocked. <laughs> and she wasn't a, really a comic, so she got shocked like crazy. every time. <laughs> yeah, every time. And they just shocked her pussy on stage. Everybody could see her pussy; it was wide open. It was insane. I've never seen anything like this. And my it wife, was just... I brought this was, this was the first time my wife came to see no. me in Austin. I was like, yeah, no, come out to the show in Austin. No, and baby, I did come my see set. me do my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a good set, and then afterwards, my wife just watched. You had watched. a great set. Yeah, I, and then I watched this chick get fucking her pussy shocked. What did your wife think of that? My wife was like, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing here? Like, what kind of Tijuana shit is this? <laughs> That's so, I was like, this doesn't seem legal in, in any of the 50 states. I was but... like, babe, this is every night in Austin. <laughs> this, is, this is my fucking life. Yeah, why do you think I'm out so late <laughs> every night? So what do you think I'm out so late every night? I'm watching this shit. There's fucking pussy zaps going on. That was crazy, though. I wasn't ready for that. I was like, let's go check out what's going on at Creek. <laughs> and then she's like, yeah, I'm going to sprawl open on the on this throne. And it was on a throne. It was There's on a, a throne. And then the, the dildo fell out of her pussy onto the floor. Just like, <laughs> just <laughs> plopped on the floor, dude. dude. It's crazy. That was wild. Would you do it all over again, dude? I would do that. I would love to do that show yeah. again. It was fun. I felt like you should have won. I think you you almost you almost won. It was like I was between, close. Yeah, it was between, you were between me and Lucas for sure. Oh, McCreary's the man. But though. he had a great set. Too. Oh yeah, he for crushed. Sure. Yeah. So, but it was a fun show. I went to the last one that happened. Did you go to that one? No. That one. Uh, uh, God damn, her name Ava. She uh, the one who hosts it mm -hmm. for the event. What she did was she pulled out her dick because she's a. Uh, Trans. Trans. Oh. And she pissed in a cup. Nice. And she chugged it. Whoa. With a guy from, uh, Tony likes this shit. Whoa. Yeah, dude. Tony's <laughs> into this, dude. Tony's rock hard right now. Why'd you, st why'd you stop? <laughs> yeah. She chugged her piss on stage while, uh, <laughs> No I forgot. Way. I think it was Mike Eaton. He was chugging a beer, and some <laughs> some random guy from the audience was chugging a beer, and that the guy from the audience was throwing. <laughs> he was about, he was about to throw up because no. <laughs> it was gross. But uh, that show is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's cool that it exists. It is cool that it exists. Like it's I'm wild. not gonna go every week. No, I think it's once a month. So it's like yeah. perfect. Oh yeah. Amount of oh time. yeah. That is actually you a perfect reset. You're you like recover, I need my yeah. one yeah crazy thing every month. Oh well, yeah! Shout out to the Creek in the Cave. Shout out Creek in the Cave. Shout out uh, Ava show. Smart and the Pervert Show. Yeah, it's awesome. Hell yeah, yeah dude. dude! Well, yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on, brother. Dude, thank and, you uh, for having me, dude. And I, I appreciate everything you do. Your, uh, your comedy's great. You're Thanks, a great, guy. Thanks, man. And, uh, and you're great too, man. I love watching your fucking development as a stand-up, and then uh, your music and your Instagram. And I need to work harder, though, dude. We all work. I need to work harder on it. It's it's easy. I do love being out here 
with all you guys for that reason because <clears throat> there's you always know that there's and i'm not the first person to say this i think ridley was the first person i heard say this was that there's so many there's always people working yeah there's always people yeah, yeah. hitting mics or you know getting booked and stuff and you're like fuck i i oh, i'm not i need to get out there i need you know yeah but you're so, aware of it so that's good yeah. that's the first step and then uh just yeah. keep grinding dog that's what i'm doing yeah i'm gonna get back out there tomorrow i'm, I'm itching you can do a mic I'm or itching. a show tomorrow i'm gonna do a mic i okay. have but i have it's nice mason put me shout out mason smith put me on a his midnight mass again later next month hell yeah so i'm like i got something to work for which helps me like a little carrot on nice. the stick yeah you know what i mean yeah, that do helps. new set, because, dude. We'll, we'll do just, new jokes. Just because, yeah, I will. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get new stuff done. But uh, it that kind of gives me that. It's kind of the same. The metal brain again, tricking the metal brain because it's like, oh, we have a show booked. We got to practice. Hell yeah, you know. So I'm trying to do that. But um, plug your shit, dude. And dude, uh, just follow me on Instagram at Anthony Papali. That's about it. Do you have a podcast yet? I'm starting one. I'm going to start one soon. I do like this thing where I do like a podcast segment where I talk to comics about bits they have that bomb. Okay. And then we riff on them and try to make them better or just yeah. laugh about them. But we should do that. I want to do that. We should. Yeah, I'll have you on. Do we'll do it. I'm going to invite myself to that. No, you're not. You're on, dude. <laughs> we'll do one. Let's do it. It'd be sick. We can film it here if that's easier. But yeah, whatever. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Do. Just write a bunch of bits that you have that bomb that you love, though. That's yeah. the thing. You got to write bits that you love. That you're okay. like, God damn, this, it has to kill. It's so funny. I'll do a deep dive. On yeah, my yeah, notes. yeah. But yeah, Anthony Papali. Thanks, Doug. Did I say it right? No, it is fine. Pap Papali. <laughs> How do I say it? Papali. Papali. Anthony there you Papali. Go. I'm there sorry. You go. I'm sorry. You're Anthony fine, Papali. Uh, follow Anthony on Instagram. Just come see him live in Austin. Yeah, always doing shows. It'd be great. Oh, yeah, brother. Let's smoke this bull. Let's smoke this bull, dude. Thanks, dog. Yeah, this was thank fun. you. This was fun. Podcast. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.